if someone has made the leap from, I don't want to feel that to maybe I should feel that. I wonder what it would be like to feel these things. Any other suggestions? So another one is captions. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. There was this viral video and it was put out by the Cleveland Clinic Hospital. And, um, and it was originally meant to just be f- a video for its caregivers to teach empathy, but it ended up going viral. And, mm. and the way this video worked, it basically took you on a visual tour down the hospital corridors. So you're just passing all these humans. And these are people who you would normally just walk past in the corridor without really thinking that much. But in this case, the video had captions underneath each one telling you what they were experiencing at that moment. And in some cases, they were experiencing something joyful, like just found out he's going to be a father, I think is one of them. But because it's a hospital, more often the captions are things like a little girl visiting her father for the last time, or you mm. know, just found out that the tumor is malignant, or whatever it is. And maybe we can link to this also in your show notes. Oh, for sure. We'll find it. Yeah, I mean, you can't you can't watch this video without tearing up. But it's but it's more than the tearing up. You can't watch it without having that physical sensation of your heart opening up. It's like it's just opening. And the lesson for me of that video, and I, I try to do it now when I just walk around, is think, well, what are people's captions? You know, just random passersby, like the you know the person who's checking out your groceries. What are her captions? And it's just an an incredible way of kind of letting sorrows in, you know, and normalizing Mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Which also reminds me like another concrete thing I think people could do in the workplace. So we know uh, one of the studies I talk about in my book was done by two people named Jason Kanoff and Laura Madden, and they looked at people's description of their work lives. And what they found is people would describe to them all these you know, like terrible things that had happened to them at work. And the stories revealed how terrible they were. But when they described their emotions, instead of saying they had felt anxious, they would say they were angry. Hmm. And instead of saying they had felt sad, they would say they were frustrated. And we need a way of opening up this language because I noticed this the other day. I, I did a, a talk about introversion in this case. It was like a Zoom call for a company. And at the beginning of the Zoom call, it started out the way it often does with like a nice chat. And, and somebody asked the question, like, how's everybody feeling this morning? You know, and, and all the answers were like, pumped, you know, yay, I'm feeling great, I'm energized, happy. And, and these are all amazing emotions. I'm not trying to take away from them. It's just, you have to ask, what are the chances that every human responding in that chat box was truly feeling only those emotions. What are the chances of that? Yeah. Like they're they're actually incredibly low. I believe there are ways for workplaces to normalize the expression of all of the different emotions that we have. You know, even by something as simple as in in a physical workplace where people are really showing up, you know, having like a, a board up on the wall where people can just write down that morning. What are you actually feeling? What are you actually going through? Like in in schools, they call that a parking lot. And I think we need a parking lot (laughs) in workplaces too. I didn't realize I didn't have one of those growing up. Yeah, exactly. So there are schools where they actually have a blackboard or a whiteboard where kids write down how they're feeling. Mm -hmm. 